beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed you see, one of, the, one of the blessings of the apostolic office, in fact, it's not just a blessing, it is also the proof, is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality. Aside from spiritual governance, you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and God allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. That if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that God has committed, these two things happen to you. Number one, illumination is granted unto you. Number two, the capacity. It says, as many as received him, even unto them that believed in his name, he gave them the power to become. When you believe it, and you receive it then power is released to become that experience hallelujah and so i have taught us again that in this kingdom dominion is a product of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom this is what we call the word of god the word of god is many things but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of god comes from the word logos the logos of god the thoughts of a man carefully calculated thoughts an extension of that word word means the mindset of a man are we together now so when you study the word of god you are accessing the mindset of god the wisdom of god and the Bible says, let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was an understanding, there was a comprehension in the Christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced. And the Bible says that if that mind is in you, it can cause you, regardless of what limitation, to produce that result. Hallelujah. This Bible was given to us as a gift. Holy men, the Bible says, wrote as they were inspired of the Spirit. Now the Bible in itself, theologically speaking, still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters. And some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year, you see obvious um, limitations, things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added. But regardless of the limitation, the word of God is still intact. The word of God is not 66 books. 
No. 66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of God. Are we together now? If all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the Bible, you can access the word of God through it. It is not just in reading Genesis to Revelations that you access the word of God. That vastness is given as a symbol of God's mercy and grace. So that regardless of how you come, what angle you come, you will still access the word of God. You have to understand what I'm saying. There are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands. Yet they can have access to the word of God. The word of God is not the reading of the book. For there are different alterations to different Bible versions. I don't want to go into all those theological debates. There are many books that are, are argued whether it should be added to the book or not. And, and people argue as it will, not, it will not change the word of God. The word of God is eternal. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter what error in interpretation. That's too small a reason to alter the word of God. The Bible says the word of God liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. Are we together now? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation, scripture tells us that we are born of the word. Born of the word born of the word but much more than being born of the word the holy spirit when he comes into the life of a believer his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of god's word jesus was speaking john 15 john 16 he began to talk to us about the ministry of the holy spirit when you read john 16 and verse 12 it was it was it was said that he, when he comes he will guide us the Holy Spirit guides you. He is the spirit of truth. But he, he will guide you into all truth. He will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error. Hallelujah. Listen. The quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of God. But not just the word of God alone. I shared it last week. Remember, our access to it first then our ability to engage the word this word of god issue is a very serious issue two scriptures all said the same thing deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3 we are talking about a life and death issue brothers and sisters we are not talking about something that you can live without it says and he humbled them afterwards go to matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what man does not live by bread only but by every word how many every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the lord doth man live that means both the quality and the quantity of your life listen is dependent on the word of god when jesus came give us matthew chapter 4 please and verse 4 satan was attempting to tempt jesus and here was his reply but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god that means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life whether sickness destiny career is the cure is in the mouth the word of god the word of God. You hear people talk about the word of God. But many believers have not given the kind of attention. That is required to produce the results they desire. The word of God. Man. So we are talking about an issue of life and death here. That if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of God. He will die both spiritually and physically. The secret 
to the mysteries of God is in his word. The secret to the multifaceted dimensions of God's possibilities is hidden in his word. The secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God. The secret for restoration, just like the worship team beautifully sang, the word of God, the secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God. But you see, believers pay very little attention to the word of God. And there is a reason for that. It's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God. We preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God. We will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them than to stand and access the word of God. We will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner. It is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything. The word of God is reliable. The word of God is dependable. The word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment. Please don't forget this. The word of God is reliable. The word of God is faithful. It would deliver as promised. If I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch, the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable, whether I am trustable, and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch. So when you think and say lunch, uh, no matter what, you should be able to afford it, then you believe me. Is that true? Everything, brothers and sisters, declared by the word of God for your destiny is doable by the word. The word of God is not a scam. The word of God is not some fraud, some trickster. The word of God is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity. So there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable. No. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. Listen carefully. Heaven and earth will pass away. It says, but the word of God remains eternal. I do not trust anything that is not built upon the word. I don't care how solid it looks. You are watching a mirage. It will evaporate. The vicissitudes of life will force it to move away. Are we together? It says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock. It's, the issue is not the house. The issue is what it was built on. Brothers and sisters, our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions. We are building our life on emotions. Building our lives on uncle connection degrees. Building our lives on, on lottery. Building our lives on business building our lives on money building our lives on intelligence that's a risk it's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed how safe is that yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of god is worse than that and we do it every day for some it's been so all their life my assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of God. My assignment is to indoctrinate you, to bring you to a point where you are, you become one experientially with the word. That your life is built upon the word. Brothers and sisters, I give you a guarantee you will never fail. I don't want to know what is happening in your life. You will never fail. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, John in his gospel was teaching. He said, in the beginning, when your uncle was not there, listen carefully. When the university was not there, when no business idea was there, 
when no seminar was there in the beginning when there was no customer in the beginning where there was no producer in the beginning where there was no lecturer it says in the beginning was the word the word is ancient in the beginning was the word and the word as a person was with god and the word himself was god verse 2 says that the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 he says how many things please talk to me how many things all things were made by now when the bible tells you all things were made by the word you should pay attention because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word your finances can be made by the word it's not there the word is what will make it the ministry can be made by the word the home can be made by the word in the beginning was the word he said all things were made by him and without him ha, this is a revelation already was not anything made that was made that means if it ever appeared the word of god made it happen this for me is healing from every fear this is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things by the word of his power the word of god is a matter of life and death the word of god is not the issue of christianity the word of god is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of god there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of god it doesn't mean you are a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of god has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word i know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle peter is teaching us something first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which does what liveth and abideth forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever 
The word of God is the only way to commit God to the affairs of your life. The word of God is not one of the ways. It is the only way an individual, a believer, can commit God to the affairs of his life. You ignore the word of God, you will pity yourself and just become emotional, believing that God is in the affairs of your life. Many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of God. With our pride and arrogance. Believing that we can believe we can build our lives. Many people are building homes without the word of God. Many people are building financial destinies without the word of God. When you talk about the word of God, they don't exactly refuse it. They just, they are passive about it. They have not seen how to engage it. God's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. Please write it down. God's word is a compendium. God's word is a compendium of all, not some, all the possibilities that are resident in God. God's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. There are many things that the word of God can do. A number of them, not all of them, a number of them were chronicled in this Bible. The 66 books are a representation, just a sample of what God can do. The Bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories. The stories are finite. The power of God is infinite. Meaning that if the Bible were to be written continually, there are more things that we'll see about God. The Bible says many miracles Jesus did, which were not recorded in this scripture. But this has been written because it is enough to make us believe. Hallelujah. The Bible is a compendium of all the possibilities. In this Bible, impossible situations were turned around. In this Bible, sick people were healed. In this Bible, God took people from the dung hill. In this Bible, farmers became prophets. In this Bible, prostitutes became the great grandmothers of Jesus. In this Bible, God turned around families. In this Bible, money failed and God turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations. In this Bible, men lost things and received it back. In this Bible, God stepped in miraculously. In this Bible, angels fought for men. So that when you see it, you can have a, a consolation that the word of God is reliable. Are we together? The word of God is dependable. The word of God is trustable. You can throw your life to it. I believe the word of God with all my heart. I will be foolish today to ever say I do not believe the word of God. But the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of God does not work automatically. Let's walk this thing now. This is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes somehow they believe that if the word of God is powerful and potent it should be able to work regardless of my impute that thing I believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons the Bible says that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons one of it is the misconception of the operation of the word this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the word how the word works 
Hallelujah. The word of God does not work automatically. It was Jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man, the man was good. The seed which was the word of God was good. The Bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds. Some fell by the wayside. Some on thorns. Is that true? Some on a rocky ground. And some on good soil. Very good word. Accurate seed. But there were some soils that made the word of God not to produce. To the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed. They were not afraid. They ate it. Listen to Jesus' own interpretation. He said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear. He says Satan comes. Satan is not afraid of the word. Satan is afraid of your understanding and your engaging it. Don't you ever make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of God, the devil will run away. Have you forgotten that he was Lucifer, the light bearer? Satan was the custodian of the mysteries of God. It was his office in heaven. Satan does not fear the word, brothers and sisters. When Satan came to Jesus, he used it is written. Good student of the word. Satan is never, ever, your access to the word does not scare the devil. It is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it. That's what paralyzes the gates of hell. That you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed. That you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper. That you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right. Is God helping us tonight? Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, I want you to listen to me. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, I promise you, for some of you, it will be a matter of days. You will watch things turn around in your life. This thing works it's just that we are engaging it inaccurately that's why it's not producing the desired results the word of god does not work automatically no sir they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them if you do not profit in business what happens to you you lose there's nothing like neutral so if the word of God does not profit a man, it means on account of that word, he can lose some things. Yes, it is the word, the correct word. Jonah carried a word from God, entered a boat with the word, made people to lose everything with the word in him. Because the word was wrongly engaged. The word was from Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered that you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well hmm. are we together if Moses never had an encounter with God he would have been spared but Moses saw certain dimensions of the word and God would not tolerate certain things from him and said, no, Moses, your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief. You are not entering the promised land, period. If he was blind, he would have entered quietly. The word does not work automatically many believers in the body of Christ this is what we have been taught the moment come doctor the moment you find the word believe it confess it go and sleep hey. listen I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting I am I am a confessor of the word listen 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 this is a system Go and buy rice, buy fish, buy oil, drop everything, heat your pot and go and sit down. Talk to me ladies. That sounds to me like rice. Well prepared rice. No sir. While you are in the parlor, keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready. You are doing the right thing. But after a very wrong approach, 
are you seeing that now this is what many of us have done we just get a scripture in the name of jesus christ the bible says i shall lend to nations i will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say god let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete that means your obedience can be incomplete it is obedience but it is not complete are we together Planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and missed one or two steps. Have you seen people have accidents because they just slept? The, the car was going well, the fuel, but they missed a step. And that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many. Listen to me. Nobody will build a destiny just by saying because I have seen the word of God and just jumped around it it won't work that way i want to show you tonight how to engage the world i started last week i want to show you the operation how does this thing work the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see i love everybody but i don't listen to everybody i love everybody i am open to learn but I have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results I want to get. I don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what I believed yesterday. I want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that I attain something very tangible. I've always shared it. It's like taking lectures everywhere. Will you be awarded a degree at the end of it? Today you go to medicine, next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts, and then next tomorrow you just go to PG block and just stand by the door and attend anything. You are writing. After many years, you have been engaging randomly. It is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding up along the path of a field. This is how it is. Many of us are not in ignorance of what we want, but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome. This brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people. You will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if god does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters god is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of god compels him to action The darkness the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light wonderful sympathetic to that environment but until the word of God came nothing changed hallelujah engaging the word of God <clears throat> scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light listen the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple the entrance not the reading not the recitation not the quoting not the watching the entrance there is an activity of the word when it enters into your spirit truly the bible says it can give light and then dependent on your state it can graduate from light to understanding are we together now that's what the Bible says would happen to us and if we understand how the Word of God works then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another the laws of God listen to me the laws of God are a representation of his love 
and his justice you have to understand this don't let the laws of god irritate you they are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory thank you james chapter 1 we're reading from verse 22 to 25 james chapter 1 apostle james is teaching us now james chapter 1 but be ye doers of the word everyone say doers of the word and not hearers only then he says if you are a hearer only what are you doing to yourself deceiving yourselves to 25 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty what is it called the law that liberates men the law of liberty that when you access it it can set you free from any bondage and continue daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results I must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later ah I see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time is God speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the Bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong I don't know about you but I'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working I don't lie that it's working I go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way I cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way Lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by God to guide me there is the truth somewhere and I begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever Pray in one minute, Lord, show me what I'm not doing right. Show me what I'm not doing right. I take responsibility. I would have been healed by now. There is something I'm not getting. I'm missing a step for sure. What is closing the doors of favor over my life? 
why does this sickness leave and come back why 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 do people help me today and hate me tomorrow why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow there is something i do not know why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and Abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10% of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you are a madman you're, there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when Jesus saw mad men read your Bible every madman Jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it 
Number one. <laughs> Number one, we do not engage the word with understanding. The first reason why the word of God seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. In all your sowing, sow with understanding in all your praying pray with understanding in all your serving serve with understanding in all your dancing dance with understanding the bible says whatever it is that you get have an understanding of what you are doing that's the first reason why the word of God seems important. The second reason is that the word of God is not engaged at all. The word of God may be believed. It may even be received. But it's not engaged. The word of God is not engaged at all. We leave the responsibility of engaging the word to God. And let me tell you where this mistake came from. It is in not knowing that the grace of God, like wisdom and like love, are multifaceted. Everybody say multifaceted. There are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted. The Bible talks about the height, the depth of love. Like wisdom too, the depth, the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do so the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the lordship of jesus the moment you do that the bible says you are saved for with the heart this is how this operation works for with the heart man believes unto righteousness romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works. Now, there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do. You do, but the strength for doing is supplied by the Spirit. Are we together now? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe, and verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think above that who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking you i'm doing the thinking i'm doing the asking but i am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all i do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it read your bible deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe do and observe do and observe all that is written how many all all that is written all that if you do not just hear not just speak do according to all that the Lord commands not according to the way you want 
then it lists a number of promises that the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you then it begins to list them there is a doing listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to God's command is called partnership is what great men of God will call covenant the obedience that binds you and commits you to God please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all so here's how it works come this is a promise by God Emeka I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful I am going to make you such an anointed man see from scripture this is my destiny for you this is God speaking now it is left for Emeka to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny lord are you not powerful who am i weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer satan wants because he comes and says look look if god is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how satan plays with our minds he said god he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say lord i just confess and leave everything and god says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the Bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing God father this is how we pray look up father I pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family Lord are you not looking at my father what is I'm reading that you are a merciful God what is all this nonsense oh God then you apologize and get back again okay Lord I'm, I'm serious what I'm trying to say is can, will you not step into my family and God says look there is an ordinance I bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh God have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh? you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony i guarantee you if you are one of them i show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what sir isaac newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move i must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you 
that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind those kinds of people will never rise so how does the word how does god himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that god is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing i know the person i believe and i am persuaded in his ability i am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of god now this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes because it is the spirit of god that makes jesus real to believers miracles do not make jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away So the first thing is an encounter, an encounter with God. The foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that God is alive. And number two, that he is mighty and able. You have to settle that. Otherwise, your journey to exploring the word of God is a waste. Many religions teach all kinds of things about Jesus Christ and about God. And even in the Christian faith, there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about God. There are people who believe that God is not really God. He's just one of the many deities. So they add him, it's an all-inclusive thought about God. That God, the name God is like a man with so many dimensions. And Jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions if that's what you believe the word will not profit you you see that yes number two when your conviction is settled now listen carefully number two is that there must be a searching the Bible says for everyone that seeketh find that there must be a searching you don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything all keys don't open any door there are specific keys for specific doors are we together now yes you cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the Holy Ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there but you just stand oh and he was alone and you just quote it and say lord I, I i at least it's the bible bible is bible no sir no sir all this humanist point of view that keep punishing us you have to find the accurate word the key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom the key to your bedroom does not open your car the key to your car does not open the safe of a bank they all require keys but you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern and where you do not know those scriptures follow those who have conquered in that area they have conquered by the word you see how it is so this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing and i'm trusting god now i believe god wants to anoint me 
I'm tired of my church struggling, sick people not being healed. And I search around. I'm in ignorance. And I just find out, okay, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I receive, but nothing is working. It means I have to explore. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery. All you do is just read. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I believe. Now the Holy Ghost is upon me. And you get up. You are seeing that nothing is working. That's to tell you there is more than that thing you read. Every time the obvious does not produce result, go prophetic immediately. It means there is, there is a deeper understanding. Every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire, there must be a prophetic interpretation. So I access her materials and I sit with the Holy Spirit. And then I trust him to begin to open me up. Now listen, listen, listen. When you begin to study the Bible and meditate upon it, you need time and you need concentration. Two things that we lack in this our distracted generation, time and concentration. You can't be cooking and trying to access revelation. You quickly, the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you, you run. And then while you are trying to off the gas, you return back. You won't continue where you left. You will start afresh again. It's like worship. When you finish worshiping and they take light, you hope that they bring it fast. If you don't bring that light after 30 minutes, don't think they just bring it and you continue. No. Somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone. Time and concentration. Let me tell you this. Many believers are distracted. It's a strategy of Satan. You are studying your Bible and playing computer game. Satan. Yes, sir. Satan. I didn't say Satan made the game. Satan created that system to distract you. Studying your Bible and making a long call. Then what did you say? I'm still on it. No. No, sir. No, sir. Study great men. How does God reveal these things to them? When there was a need for revelation, Daniel said, Oh, king, don't worry. Just give us time. Daniel was not loitering around in the silence. Then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. There are some of us who believe that because you are always around people, it's a sign that you are a famous person. Let me advise you. You may not be very great if your entire life is corporate. You must understand the power of a private life. Are we together? It's good to have a corporate fellowship. It's good to be with your husband, your wife, your children. But there are times, listen, certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone. Even demons work like that. There are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone. There are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone. I want you to learn this. These things I'm teaching you are, are the ways God has opened me up to revelation. You need conviction, then you need to search out. Let me take one area that is very obvious for us. Let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity. For instance, things are not working in your life. Things are not working in your family. Let me tell you what many of us say. Oh God, I've been crying about this employment issue. He won't you wipe my tears and give me a job. Be very honest. Is it a job that is going to solve your problem? I'm not saying a job is bad. But you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom. Not a job. You don't make money off job. You don't make money off business. You make money off understanding. Are we together now? Yes. And so the person just says, well, Lord, I thank you. And then you believe that things will change. Or your health. You are trusting God. The devil is afflicting your body. Afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible 
I, I got a very powerful revelation from Bishop David Oetico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that I cannot begin to explain do you know that Satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty he doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you, are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us you are, you, are, you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy at the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons i pray for people and i look at certain sicknesses i know that this has to be a demon praise the lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, 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 a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of I say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the Bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is god speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because i've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God. Sir, poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life. Take it from me. When you stand and see an empty plate before you, you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are, you are thinking still it. Are we together you know we don't tell ourselves the truth in church we lie to ourselves is that true is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 
this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if God has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of God do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as the account in the finance department they write a check a blank check they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men please answer me how much does the poor man have is it not a big man somewhere that promises them that i will change your life and you are there and your ends have not met they, they, you don't know where dinner will come from yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue there are people now some of you students school is about to resume and the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from so when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of god stopped loving god and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what god is saying these are strategies of the enemy please i if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints we are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now as soon as they graduate they just say lord i want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy i just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down he will say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension i was running your your school you are staying one year to see god that means i'm not a christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny i'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say i want to leave society it says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Aye. may god raise a generation of people that will access these things you know years ago i listened to our father in the lord bishop oyedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry i don't want to sit down serving god thinking about money imagine if i was thinking about my daily bread i now prophesy to you and say sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it let me tell you prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life yes sir yes sir i can sit down spend time worshiping bless your people oh god not come and say you are joining the queue where's the envelope you are holding you, you can imagine that kind of thing so it's not every man of god you see doing these things that are bad they have not understood how to engage this is what i'm trying to bail you from are we together do you know how to command results or are you aware that results can be commanded do you know how to command it or are you aware brothers and sisters if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death do you know how to come out or do you hope you will come out There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear 
are power twins that Satan brings to your life to disturb you. On one side you are afraid, but on another side there is tremendous arrogance. So they will not learn. When I find somebody who has an understanding in an area I don't, I will not argue. No matter what I don't understand about what he's saying, I give his revelation a chance. There are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor, listen to a message and say, this is not correct. Look at the person talking. Are we together? There are many people who have never prophesied. They have never seen anything. And they will tell you, hear God alone. Don't listen to a man of God. The person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him. Yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of God. Nobody needs to prophesy to your life. Forget about just to do this and, and for this cause. Many are weak. There are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for. But they can stay for 10 years. They've done everything well. But one thing is needful and they've missed it. Are we together? Don't criticize what you don't understand. Let your heart be open to say, Lord, speak to me. It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word? Let's start with our spiritual life. Some of you think I'll start with money. Listen first. Your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. <laughs> if I ask you, how do we grow spiritually? What are you going to tell me? I read my Bible and i pray every day question have you not been doing it have you been growing <laughs> are we together there are many liars in church we just open the bible in the morning and read anywhere we are just come is the purpose of reading the bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual they just open any scripture and Abraham did this then they open another one the Lord will perfect all that concerns you then they pray Lord I thank you today is blessed I speak to this day and then they come out and their lives are messed up and after many years they don't grow brothers and sisters that's not how we grow in the kingdom you never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words take it from me no you don't grow that way not in the anointing not in the knowledge of God I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29 read it with me one to read uh-huh uh-huh the last three words please one to read one more time one more time you see these three words that is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God it says and ye will seek me many are doing it but you will only find me 
when you search for me with everything everything brothers and sisters your motive and your hunger for god vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your study of bible and your reading of books there are many of those who wrote the bible they work in zondavan they work in white taker house the publishing companies but they are not born again printing the bible and walking around it does not bring growth there is a depth of hunger read your bible everyone who found god in the bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of god mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search ye shall seek me hear what david said a man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the bible does not mean you pant after god it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing i know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with god an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you didn't an encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of god meet god an encounter is where those who are desperate for him they say oh god as a matter of life and death that is the place where he washes you that is the place where he builds you you don't have an encounter you will never grow spiritually we can flatter ourselves listen the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth there is a big deception sweeping the body of Christ and thank God I walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe I'm just talking listen I can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace the anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth it is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office if that anointing comes on a handkerchief it will produce the same result handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives listen that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they'll be healed after 10 days find out whether he will still do it again it's gone because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you're like this is is this thing? is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them service is going on they are at the back of the church gisting taking sugar cane eating biscuit they now say it's time for elijah to come and minister and then just cleans his mouth and comes and after five minutes you see people rolling on the floor and you finish you say my god elijah no sir no sir god does not judge you based on the gift in your office it's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the bible out of competition 
to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now uh the art head will flow together ah, i remember 2004 i preached a message like that just dust it add a and b are we blessed the starting point of your spiritual life is to trust god for a hunger that can last your lifetime hmm. i will give up ministry a thousand times some of you don't like what i'm saying because i said i'll talk about money too you better listen to what i'm telling you because this is this is what will make money not kill you i want you to ask the lord he will tell you there is nothing in this life nothing in this life that i cannot give god ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for god the measure of your love for god is not sung when you say you love this lady she says sir i've not eaten i say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension i'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see god do in my life today i submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting it's because god knows that anything he gives me is his own ah my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen i'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the bible how many pastors move around oh my member my choir my this and god says all right so you pay the bills you 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 decorate everything you bring members by yourself how many churches put pressure on their people go and bring five souls otherwise you pastor will look at you and say i saw three please 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 John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you born. Where the carcasses are, brothers and sisters, that's where the eagle will come. There are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire. The key is not to go and call them. The key is to keep burning. The key is not to go and call them. The key is to keep burning. My heart belongs to you. My life belongs to you. When I go to pray, he is Lord of my prayer. I don't just go -da 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 -da, as if I'm a fool. As if you are, you are, you are chanting a, a charm. I approach God like one who is totally dependent on him. He is the Lord of my prayer life. Many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy. So when we do it and someone is watching you, you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior. No, sir. This is not how spiritual things work. Above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you. There is a meeting place. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. Hey, help that lady. And now I'm lost without you. This is how it works in the kingdom. And now. Listen, man of God, let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you. Because every time you think power, you think conference. 
you think of a plane flying you around every time you think god you think honorarium every time you think god you think man of god you imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying this is apostle and god says you know way you first try hundred days and god says in spite of it and ye shall seek me and only find me and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches no, what is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter encounter is not sitting down and no it is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment there were people who will lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night now when people lock themselves to pray it is oh god give me a wife oh god give me a husband i'm not saying these things are wrong oh god give me this oh god i must graduate oh god i must get a job service what is all this nonsense and ye shall seek me please god is not a joker let me tell you if all of you does not seek him forget about it there are ladies seeking god only to prepare themselves for ministry no you won't find god that way if at any point you find yourself using God, just know that you and the anointing, you and glory, you are far. Please hear what I'm telling you. I, I never started, hold on, I never started my walk with God knowing I will even be a preacher. One, one gentleman came here, I think some months ago, with documents from his ministry, well articulated, and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a... i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me all of me, use all of me. I lay my everything, take my everything, I release my everything, take my everything, say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place. I'm not a musician. This, this is what happens when you want to grow. Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences. But brothers and sisters, these men were seekers of God. There was a prophetess called Anna. The Bible says she stayed in the temple. Stayed in the temple. Since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple listen 
preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean it's releasing life the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it listen honestly speaking we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God we know how to preach we know how to sing we know how to produce albums we know how to write books but to seek his face where you are fasting not because you want power you are saying Lord show me more of you reveal yourself to me I remember those days in the night those of you in vet vet a uh, faculty of um, what they call it now vet there is a place one of the neglected places I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night I will be there till morning crying and saying, Lord I've created a place where no one can distract us reveal yourself I wasn't looking for power reveal yourself right now what happens in the church is just an is just a galore of talent galore of talent i am this i read this i know this i dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of god in the body of christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with god lord i rehand my life again take all of me all of me lord hey, use all of me all of me lord take all of me all of me lord i give all of me all of me lord listen the bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the bible says she came before god with her treasure a representation of our all let me show you how to get the heart of god other people were coming with all their we know that moses said this and he said this is not what i'm looking for but here comes a woman the bible says she came with sparking out pure nard one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before god the king poured it the bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give god your heart and take finance you can give god finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what i'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that working with god does not pay no you want to do business with god there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving god eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of god in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days you will not see anything you want to see demons crying out as you minister brothers and sisters is not running around to look for a man of god you a man cannot impart his secret place no sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation 
one of the most deceptive things happening in the body of Christ now is this craze for impartation. People just write the names of five or ten men of God around that they think are anointed and divide seeds like a business and hop from one location to the other, touch me, and then they snap. I I I got impartation from this. Hey, Jimmy, please. I got impartation for wealth. Apostle, I got impartation for this. Prophet, this, give me your own. Then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings. You are joking. You think God is that cheap? He said, many are called though, but few are chosen. Gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone, like roommate, and you hear people groaning and crying before God in the night. Now people snort their way till morning. A pastor, a preacher. Oh God, anything that will take your presence from my life, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come. It not come. Ministry, I will give it up a thousand times. Money, marriage, children, a thousand, a million times. Listen, those of you here who God has called into ministry or you are going into ministry, please, let me give you a loving caution. Be careful. Be careful. Who you follow matters. Be careful. There is a path. There is a path that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for God. People follow your hunger, not your talk. While you are talking, people are watching you and they will find out, is it true that this person hungers after God? Brothers and sisters, I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message. But the presence of God that left them, left me going back to cry and say, from whence cometh this man? Which depth? Where did this, what did this person touch? That's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke Crusade. I didn't go there to hear revelation. I was already preaching. I was already walking in miracles. I went to hear a man who knew God. He talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it. Let's return back to the secret place. Let's return back to retreats. It's a language we are not used to again. Learn to off your phone, no. Please, learn to source, especially now that it's December. Don't enter. Do you know why we end Koinonia? We have just one more service and we are done. That one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before. Just go back and say, ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it Christmas holiday. It's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves. I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time. No more counseling. No more ministrations. And let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation. Not looking for power for next year. Not looking for prophetic word for next year. I don't get the prophetic word by searching. I get the prophetic word by worshipping God and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me. There are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me, they are waiting to hear something, a revelation. Oh, Greek, Logos. And then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship. Gentlemen, I shipped something from somewhere. We will keep mocking ourselves with this thing. You don't fake presence. When you carry the presence of God, it is palpable. 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 Something happened. I don't know when, when, which of the days now it was. I was alone and someone came to see me. And I wasn't even out here. The person just sat down. I went in. And all of a sudden, I came and saw the person shaking like a leaf. Shaking like a leaf. And I looked. I said, my God. Do you know why? Because you can make your house a habitation of angels 
all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God is death not prayer not Bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the Word of God now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can't bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say I've gotten to the throne I wish I can go through this death for you it is one thing I know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing God experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that God must subject you through to cause you to know him yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death until I walked there I never knew that I can fear no evil we live in a generation that binds everything we don't have discernment to know whether it is of God whether it is a furnace that God is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually a pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him anything you see that is not favorable to your senses you cast it and many of us have casted the realms from which power will come there are people who God will say all of you go for work gone are the days where people hear God like this and somebody says you owe for you two years you are with me no work for you and everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you and saying this your stupid man of God has turned your head upside down and you feel that pain and it is in that pain you know something about God We don't have experiences that make us know God. We are full of theory. There is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter. You don't know God by theory. People are in a rush to go to, for ministry. Some of us, when God called us, He took His grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves. We knew it was not the issue of intellect. Is God speaking to you? I remember those days when we traveled for crusade. It was not the boosting of a man of God's ego. People looked forward to encounters. Encounters with the power of God. Never embarrassed by our failures. Right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things. If someone prayed for the sick and he, did, he was not healed, you may not see that person for the next three days. Not because the person is, not because his tongue is ego. It's a revelation that you must know more. And the person will go and lock himself. Lord, there's got to be more. But right now, pastor lays hands on 90 people. 90 people don't get healed. And he says, well, at least we had a successful intellectually sound meeting. Will I ever be that kind of preacher? Do you have time for God? I know you have a Bible. I know you pray, but do you have time for God? Show me the book where you record his voice. Show me the encounters. Show me the personal vigils that you do. Personal vigils, not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything. Alone. I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God, I would never forget. I came around Chapel of Redemption there. He was in the rain. It was raining, yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort, and we are angry. Nah, no. I can't go to church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They wouldn't think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something. You turn, ah, this lady that I like, this other one who respects me. My son is here. My daughter is here. Death. 
that's why we fight i am apostle joshua selma not brother joshua selma fight that's a sign that you are alive in yourself please in one minute if i'm unable to continue no problem i'd like you to be honest i want us to repent this night let's take five minutes i don't know what position you will assume worship just set the atmosphere for us with the simba play the strings i want to hear that sound of the strings i give you five minutes with your makeup please i like you to cry your heart to jesus the king of kings and the lord of lords i want you to be honest Take all of me Use all of me Take all of me Use all of me Cry before him. Let his glory come upon you. Let an abandon of us in another. Shed a masana, the Malania Lama. Lord, a fresh, a fresh. A fresh, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, fresh encounters, fresh encounters. Let a basena na masena na le le da da she da da le da da le da da. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do For nothing else can take your place Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes To feel the warmth of your grace Help me find a way would you bring me back to you? Hey, hey, hey. You're all I want. Shere masena masana na dia na na de na na de na na de na 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 na. I have seen what prophecy can do. The Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression. 
the power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel. The Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones. Listen carefully. The Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence, waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound, the Bible says. That shaking and bones began to look for themselves. Bones talk of structures structures son of man prophesy again to the four winds and say O oh winds breathe upon this slain and he prophesied again as commanded and the bible declares that the wind came entered into these bodies without life and they arose an exceeding great army i believe with all my heart that's what god is going to do over someone's life Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry another incident the bible says that the sons of the prophet were with elisha and they said where we meet with you is too small let us go beyond the jordan and the bible says he granted them permission and while they were cutting the tree the axe head fell and one of the sons of the prophet said alas master for it was borrowed you thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? He said, no, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity, the axe head began to float. another time there was hunger in the land of Samaria the hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children Nigeria has not gotten to that level I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit but that hunger will make a mother imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day two women remember that was the agreement there was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything imagine the hunger that means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a a plate of food is not up to a child's head yet two people ate a whole child Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. 
and say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility and made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. Prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me. Are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No. You will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him, them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. 
Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. 20 and one days he was there traveling. And then the angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them alienated that means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said and the Bible says it doesn't mean he lied but that something about your life and my life there is a level of understanding understanding of what not just an information the ways of God are we together now please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? The system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water has calmed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside. As rich as you are, have you ever lost your ATM and you stand angry as rich as you are? They just made a transfer and you are hungry. The ATM is looking at you, you are looking at it. The difference between you and your breakthrough is that ATM. Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key, ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link that you have done what you know the shop is already there the goods are already there but for some strange reasons the customers do not come your certificate is already there the application has been submitted but you are building with intelligence you are building but the prophecy that will make that building finish 
The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They built and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy, that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed. But the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that. And he's surprised. In two months, he has opened another branch. He doesn't know what happened. Whether you know a law is there or not, once you engage it, it works. For your favor or not for your favor. I jump from here by mistake, I will fall. Gravity will not say, no, I'm aware he's joking. It's an example. No. There are no examples with laws. You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are. I will, I will come out when you... No. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think, in the U.S. He said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building, God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build we get the raw materials and then we say based on this and that and that i will build this great destiny in the name of jesus we we can be well-meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings. Not just through intentions. It was Bishop Oyedeko who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him. And he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him. I hope I'm right with the story. And then he opened, you know, a compartment full of money. And then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say, no, I don't want this. And he looked at him and blessed him. And he says, from today, God has given you the grace of on time. That before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen unbelievers know this they prepare their work together 
Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was, didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone. And said they should give it to him put it on the loudspeaker as i was speaking there and then the woman gave birth right there in the hospital someone that they were saying after maybe if they would induce or do something or maybe a cs or so and the baby just came out like that when the systems of the kingdom are put in place you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a close heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around to the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying.
Hallelujah. Look at me. Words are like trays in the realm of the spirit. Come, hold this for me. No, Ejimi, don't worry. Let him do it. Hold the tray, not the water. Put it down and hold the tray. This is how words are in the realm of the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words carry things. Words are trays in the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words contain mysteries. So the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on errand again. Listen. Words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you say that is word in English, but in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I I, I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package. Then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken and then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you and you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand there. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say, it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say, I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say, by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes and you don't receive it. And it goes back. He sent forth his word. When they received the word, the word healed them. The word delivered them. So he sent forth healing. He sent forth deliverance. But they were carried in a tray called words. This is the mystery. Men receive. 
That's why when you see people talk about the word, word, most people, even those who teach it, they don't even really fully understand what they are saying. They think it is speakings that gives you intelligence. No. Words convey information. They convey thoughts. But that's not the only thing they do. They are mighty systems of impartation. Words. I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing, you receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city Jesus was teaching, find out whether there be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected these are some of the things that govern the results that we get look at the wonderful that adorable lady that shared her testimony from lagos words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and hiv of 24 years when the word gets to hiv HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that he's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and, ah, is he not, this guy, this, this 33-year-old body is fooling people. This is not 33-year-old. This is the ancient of days. Hidden in a 33-year-old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh, mighty man of fellow. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts, come, Sam, come, this lady. If this is a husband and wife, and you greet all of them and give them plates, huh? or you give them cup, or a set of tea, you give them gifts, not a blessing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. They will carry those things and somebody can steal it. But when you speak over their lives, those 
those words remain and start walking. So this guy was supposed to fail. Remember, when he gets to the place where he wants to fail, that word is a spiritual buffer. It starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble. There was supposed to be trouble. Ordinarily, he would have been a victim. But something that was on him will move him. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. There is something that you can receive. And where there is a job that is your own, you find yourself moving there. You are not moving. Something is moving you there. This is what creates favor in life. It looks like a repetition of coincidences. Everything good that is about to happen, you call them, they say, I just heard about it. Must you hear about everything good? Then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it. The same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come. Someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys. I say, what is, is it that I'm not beautiful? It's not about beauty. It's about what happened. That's why the Bible says God can deliver men from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can use words to program something on you and just say, go. Now, you will, because you didn't feel anything, that word remains. This gentleman is standing here. He's supposed to marry her, but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer, they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I, the slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, what is this again? If you don't believe this, 
then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished. Go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we're going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare. Declare and pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life, is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances 
that are written upon men like a stigma, like a karagma. The mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. It's not my fault that I came from this family. Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are backed by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams. Bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting. And every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me 
I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something. Entered their boat. They lost properties. Lost. They were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them. And say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my By the spirit of might, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick work in this place. I pray, oh God that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three, my God. I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four. Get ready now. Five. Let that fire right now. In the name of Jesus. Everything in your life that must leave. I declare right now. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring them out. Outside, everywhere, overflow. One, two, three. The roadside, online. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place. I declare and I prophesy. I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family, into every destiny. And I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment, judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors. Listen, over life, if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open, no matter what you do, something is about to happen to you now. Lift your hands. Father, I declare, anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors, shakatabata, now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus. I judge that spirit. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances. Close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside. Be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the sun, it could be chains that are territorial. It could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right 
now in the name of Jesus I command a release right now I command a release right now a release right now a release right now what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. I decree and I prophesy. Right now in the name of Jesus, let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, Entekalekata Katakata, Rakata Bakatosh, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare the count of three. The spirit that manifested must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. Jesus Christ. How 
many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come, not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Seba Hasha. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams. Dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you I see dead them. people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here, that any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. Agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders in the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol. Please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. And as we worship in your presence there is healing 
Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare 
that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month lift your voice and pray 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 delayed promise Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. online I want you to believe pray believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O oh God of heaven.
in the name of Jesus Christ father I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery father I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve things that if we see with the eyes of men it will even challenge our faith my God surprise everyone please agree with me surprise everyone in the name of Jesus Christ let every need represented here whatever that need is I agree right now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God let every need here be turned into a miracle any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered may the fire of judgment come upon them now remember all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men away from you all blessings come from God through men to you all blessings live from Satan through men so whether it's from God or from Satan men play a role I say it again in the name of Jesus everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role to sabotage what God has answered what he has done in your life let the fire of judgment rest upon them now let me give you an instance if God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you you know what that man has done he didn't just kill you he stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family I'm saying it again any human agent if you don't like it just say amen to the one you believe but any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life May the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it, and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God, he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong and may they correct it. anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now and by some activity of darkness it has not yet touched your head I declare may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now I taught you about words never forget words are trains God is serving you something he's only using words are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again don't say you have said it before remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying not once Jesus your Jesus Touch the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen. We want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, Whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare. The spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I curse that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job, I don't care how long you have waited, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. The Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming for, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood-sucking spirits will curse you. Pray! We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos. Peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love, the spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, that together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this who are matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God. So the issue is not just about Christians. It's not just about Muslims and all of this. My perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work. Our responsibility as believers are, is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray 
and speak peace. He says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. So we will continue to pray. But it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death. The Bible calls the death of a fool. Are we together now? It is wise that we are vigilant. By God's grace, whatever information we have, a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information. And if there is any cause for concern or any action, there is an intelligence system to reach everyone. Avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around. Your job is just to continue to pray. For believers that have for any reason gone to be with the Lord, it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things. When believers go to be with the Lord, let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope. While we continue speaking life, let me balance this. Because if, if God forbid, but if I die today, it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of God for the saints. So on one side, while you weep and mourn for what has happened, the word of God is bigger than any man. I'm saying this because sometimes Satan uses these things to discourage the body of Christ. Let God be true and every man, including the best of us, be a liar. So make sure you continue to stand on your convictions. Be sympathetic to people. Don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people. But maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what God has said should be. Are we together now? I speak to everyone here. The covenant of protection. You have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that has protected us, the grace that has protected this, this ministry, may that grace speak in your life. I forbid the earth, nor the sword, from receiving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Like we prophesied, October is not done yet. Between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the Spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus. Or number two, that I need to make my ways right with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I feel a need for a restoration. Please, wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat. Please, every time we make an altar call like this, give the people a chance to come. Don't intimidate them. Let there be no movings and let the people come. Wherever you are, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online. Be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time. There's no distance. God bless you. Keep coming. I see a gentleman coming. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you. Always ready to give you a new beginning. The Bible says to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Look at this, my adorable children. Make sure you say, Lord Jesus, too, dear ones. Say, Lord Jesus. 
I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my savior you be my Lord you be my king I believe that Jesus died for me I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I am saved I'm a child of God amen Jesus thank you for these ones you have drawn them by your spirit let the grace that saves let the grace that keep rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ they will go from glory to glory I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus from today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen I salute you once again thank you for this very bold decision please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again bye